Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, Movie Thoughts. Okay, so I gotta start with the ending. I really wish this movie had ended about 10 minutes sooner than it did. We get a Luther Stickle cameo, and that's about the one positive, I guess, to the whole ending. The we are a team speech is, excuse me, incredibly corny. And just the whole, it wouldn't have been bad if this movie had just ended with them having just exactly, you know, completed, although I really don't think Ethan should actually have said mission accomplished. Anyway, we have him, you know, convince the others to go on a new mission and Remember the old days where, you know, four spies wouldn't meet in public like that? Yeah. Anyway. I mean, there's secret... Anyway. Anyway. First, I gotta just discuss the wife. You know, the, the wife. She's, she's still alive. I'm not entirely sure she's being portrayed by the same actress one and this one actually seems kind of cute. Yeah, anyway, so she's there and she has a big black guy around. I don't know, I guess to cover behind in case she gets shot at. And, you know, she evidently knows that Ethan is watching, which is, you know, absolutely brilliant because why shouldn't this woman know that you know, her secret agent ex-husband is watching her. I mean, you know, it went great when Sid told her fiancé that she was a secret agent. Yeah. Alias reference. In case you didn't catch it. Not only that, and how creepy is it to have, you know, Tom Cruise spy on his ex-wife. Was that like a little hint, like a little warning, you know, just in case that I rang up that <laughs> this is what's in store for you. Yeah, anyway, that whole thing, the fact that she is still alive, completely blows the right scene we had earlier of just and just the entire motivation the entire background for Brandt this you know the survivor's guilt the I you know I made a mistake and it cost me horribly that's an actual that actually happens to people and you know what when that happens to people the important thing is that you work to you know to not be completely destroyed by it, you know, go on living, if at all possible, and take necessary precautions to keep it from happening again, if you can. That is real life. But no, this is Hollywood. This is, you know, merry, gumdrop, smiles, happy, happy, fun time land, where no actions have any consequences whatsoever, because you know, heaven forbid that people actually take something worthwhile from a movie they watched. You know, no, we can't have him be, you know, affected by something that, you know, he made a mistake, but don't worry, nothing actually happened. Because isn't that how it always is in real life? You know, when you make a mistake, nothing actually happens. And all you need is for someone else to tell you that that, you know, that person didn't actually die. That just completely, it very nearly undermines. If Sawyer had actually showed up as well, I would probably have stood up in the theater and shouted BS at the top of my lungs. Yes, probably uncensored. And presumably in Danish. But anyway, yeah, that just utterly and completely you know it's not even bad that 
Ethan realizes that Bran was the agent from, you know, Croatia. But you need to have a proper sort of, you know, I know you tried your best kind of dialogue and, you know, this, you know, something. Instead of just, yeah, that just... I mean, it's actually not unlike the third one, you know. You know, you promise that you've killed her off and then... Or that you're gonna kill her off, and then it turns out, oh, wait, no, not actually the case. You know, it. it yeah. Benji is really annoying in this movie. I, you know, I would have expected that, you know, from. It's just. He was the goofy guy in the third movie, and, you know, the, the Q with Quark, you know, I guess that's what the Q stands for now. That's fine in this little, you know, tiny taste, but for an entire movie, and, you know, he's still just Marshall from Alias. It's, you know, there's that one episode where, you know, Marshall goes on a mission and... He's just, you know, it's that exact same behavior, and again, it was better on Alias, you know, that was actually kind of fun, and, you know, kind of worked, maybe also because we had spent so much time with him just as an agent, you know, if this was like the seventh film, where so now Benji's an agent, but no, it's only the second time we see him, and now we're seeing way more of him. Yeah, it's just, you know, so on that first mission, he doesn't stop talking, because that's funny, right? When people don't stop talking, no, that's just obnoxious. And I realize the irony of stating that after I've, you know, been talking at a camera for a while. But anyway, I can stand the Indian you know, playboy guy, if it had just been, you know, the problem is they make him so goofy, and so it, it just, it's not funny, it's just kind of weird, and it's just less credible that this guy could actually pick up women, you know, I mean, do Indian women not have standards? Just because he's rich doesn't mean that, you know, he's just intolerable, you know, and he puts up with so much from her, it just, it makes no sense. I do kind of like that, you know, Ethan brings it back by kissing her to, you know, make him jealous, but then, you know, again, you know, after that, she, you know, tosses him around, she, you know, nearly breaks his wrist or hand or whatever, and that whole thing, it just, yeah, it, I wish that, you know, they didn't... It, there are too many things in this where the actions don't really have consequences. You know, like, a plan of theirs doesn't work out. But, oh, don't worry, it'll, it'll be fine. They'll just think up something else in a minute. And that's just... Is that really... Does that really pass for satisfying storytelling? I mean, I get that you want to surprise your audience, but it's just... Having stuff appear out of the blue isn't a good way to develop a story. It's just, there are so many things where you think it's going to work out this specific way, and then that doesn't work, and then they just do something else. I just, I don't know, is it just me? I. It just really doesn't seem that interesting. And then you have these situations where, I mean, basically, the entire double meeting kind of thing is a complete waste of time because they end up losing the launch codes. In fact, it's to the real guy. Why did it need to be the real guy? That's like the one mask in the entire film that's actually worn by anyone, you know, other than, again, you know, they just can't let these aspects of, you know, the franchise go. You know, the masks that they're supposed to wear are botched. I was she going to wear a... This is going to sound racist, but was Jane going to wear a mask to make her look, you know, white? 
how was that gonna work out? That, I didn't even realize that until just now. Anyway, you know, so that's the one mask that is worn, is that, you know, it's not, it's not the right-hand man, it's the actual guy. So, that makes no difference whatsoever. It literally doesn't change a thing. It's like, you know, that actually makes, you know, if they had just shot him or, you know, slowed him down, something, but yeah, it just, it didn't need to be him. What, did he trust his right hand man? Was that why he had to go by himself? I also wish that something had actually come of that other dude, the, you know, Leonid or something with the family and all, you know, that maybe he would, I don't know, because again, that was, you know, a potentially interesting aspect, but really, we, the guy didn't need to have a family and be, you know, disinclined to help, you know, the insane guy who's nice enough to, in a speech where he describes what he wants to do, is, you know, actually telling us his entire motivation, you know, I've been looking at this stuff for so long that I've gone crazy. Who talks like that? That's like a comic book villain speech or something, you know, from the Silver Age. That is just, that is bad. That is lazy. You know, again, the film just isn't gonna, you know, it, it's afraid of taking even a short break. So it can't have, you know, two different scenes, you know, convey those two different things, you know. It's, no one actually talks like that. Or how about just one of the other, one of the agents state that about him. He's been, you know, he's been looking at uh, this stuff for 30 years. Maybe he went insane, you know, that's a lot of things. Just something like that, but... Anyway, anyway, so yeah, the entire double meeting, the whole point was to be able to follow the guy and or maybe end up with, you know, the assassin, M Mousseau or something. Moreau. Was that a reference to the island, Dr. Moreau? Anyway. You know, so, but she ends up dead, and he ends up running away with the codes. So, yeah, that entire sequence was utterly pointless. And so was the getting into the Kremlin. You know, if it if if they got something out of these things, it would. But they don't. You know, they just they get to the Kremlin. Oh wait, what we're looking for? It's gone. So I guess just let's go. You know, what was it? Was the point that he should see the other guy there? Was that the... Why were they piggyback, piggybacking off the radio signal anyway? To... Oh, I guess to frame him. Okay, never mind. And, yeah, the double meeting, you know... If they hadn't intervened, the same thing would have happened, is basically my point here. You know, so... Yeah, they, they end up in as bad a situation as they were in before. And you've just wasted half an hour of the audience's time, you know, with something that led nowhere. You know, in the first movie, yeah, Ethan gets, you know, it gets noticed that he was, you know, breaking into the, you know, the server room or whatever it's called to get the knock list. But he got the knock list! You know, in this movie, you know, it's spotted, and then, oh, wait, that, you know, destroys the whole thing. You know, yeah, it just, I do, I, I like the cat fight between Jane and Moreau, and I like the sort of conflict afterwards with Jane is, you know, saying, should I not have killed her? She had a gun, she could have killed you, she could have killed me, you know, it was a split-second decision, and 
her having to deal with that, you know, she's suddenly, you know, she has to put the gun in Benji's hand because if I'm guarding her, I'm going to kill her. Excuse me. You know, that's, again, an interesting situation. And if Moreau had had a shred of personality, and if she had been a character for more than, yeah, I don't know, 20 minutes of screen time, there could have been something there, you know, there could have been something interesting. But again, it just kind of, yeah, I mean, at what point is the death of a character in a movie just, you know, well, it serves a purpose. It's not so much that, you know, oh no, someone died, and, you know, it's just that, well, that, you know, that ties off this loose end, you know. If she had lived, they would have had to come up with some way she doesn't give them any information because they wanted, you know, the team to go on without any information so that they had to go some other way. You know, I get what they're doing with the film. I get that, you know, everything is going wrong and the equipment isn't working and, you know, they have no backup and all that, you know that it's supposed to look like a nearly hopeless situation, and yet they still overcome it. That, I do think, is partially sabotaged by the humor. Because I didn't really feel... When I watch the Bourne movies, I feel like this guy is just being chased by every single law official near him at all. And if anyone spots him, he's going to be captured immediately, and it's going to be dangerous. I didn't feel that for a second of this movie. Even when the Russian dude did show up, it was just like, okay, well, Ethan deals a couple of punches, and then he moves on. And that's just it. Why was the Russian in this movie? To explain to the Russians that really, you know, Ethan was working for... You know, we're, we're, we're on the same side, you know, that, I think, recurring line. I, okay, couldn't that have been done without devoting a character to it? You know, you, you remove that character, I'm not sure you're really particularly going to lose anything. You know, you could just have some kind of just, well, we dealt with it, you know. It didn't make it more credible, not to me at least. I gotta say, it's, you know... What, so just because one person is, you know, aware that it worked out, it, and, you know, isn't Ethan looking about as guilty as he did before? He's still right by the, you know, detonation device. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think the Russian actually saw him press the abort button, so, yeah. I guess that maybe more or less covers it. The chase during a sandstorm was somewhat interesting. Yeah, I suppose that's pretty much it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.